Uh, distress is also embossable. But if I wanted to cover a whole large area, obviously, of a tag and get that modeled effect, going from the pad's not going to do that. That's going to always give me that soft blended look. Well, now that Distress is fluid, let's get the same color so you can see it. I just like laying them down. It's easier for me to see them all. It is. And where's Broken China? There it is. I can take this, and this is going to allow me to color the entire tag. Same color, but now it's far more fluid one application. And this is going to be reactive with water. So you think, okay, well can't I just take a re-inker and mix it with water? You could, but now you're going to get a watered down version of that ink. This it won't be reactive. This, however, is the same type of ink as this pad, so it's going to be reactive with water, which means if I spray it with water, it's going to do all sorts of cool blending and mixing and all that when you dry it. And it's quick, because now you have, yeah, you have the ability to ink grunge board and yeah, grunge board and chipboard and canvas and any of those things simply by swiping it on. It's quick. Yeah. It's really quick. What's your favorite new product that you came out with? Favorite new product? It would have to be Distress Day. Yeah. Those taking, are my favorite. Taking products. Distress into a whole new level for me, that's what's exciting. Because I mean, I've been using Distress now for uh, just about seven mm -hmm. years. Uh, you know, love the ink pads. And it's been a great way to distress. I mean, stamping and all of that. But this just creates that background. So this is the stain, just I quickly have a background, but I'm gonna go back in with my ink pads. It certainly won't replace distress pads, ever. It's just going to give you that quick base coat that you can then go back and add your distress inks to. So now if I wanted to go in and add some color, well now I'd go back to my distress pads and just start introducing some color. Yeah, so here you can go in there's a little pine needles there. Yeah, I mean, all the, all the products and, of course, all the colors are designed to uh, integrate together, obviously. You make it look so easy. It is easy. <laughs> Don't listen to her. She does, too. It's not she gets to be really perfect, grungy. Right? Yeah, you just kind of go with it. So I'm just going to show you a couple quick backgrounds. So this one, again, even though we blend it, we can go in and still react what we just put on there. But see, the stains would have never given us that soft, dusty concord or that soft pine It would have just been the fluid version. So that's the thing, is kind of just adding this to your arsenal and using them back and forth with one another, not saying, oh, I'm just going to use stains, I'm just going to use ink pads. It's, now I've got a fluid way to use it to quickly do my background of Broken China. Now I can just start adding little hits of color to it. All right, so there's one way. Now let me show you another cool way to do it. Another cool way is I can actually take the stain and put it right on my craft sheet. So I can go in just with colors and just put that down. Whatever colors you want. I want to throw in maybe a little wild honey. We can throw that in there. Now, if you've seen uh, me do wrinkle free, you know that I normally like push an ink pad down, spritz it with water. Now with the stain, you don't have to do it. It's already fluid. So now I can just take this. And now I'm gonna get all this really great color in one application. And again, it's reactive. So if I wanted to spritz it with water, look at that. Get that whole cool fluid look what just from using the stain. Uh, influences you. What influences me? Yeah. Uh, creating influences like, me. Like you know, anything, anyone. Um, no, I, I'm pretty. I mean, I'm inspired by a lot of different artists, but uh, not anything that I try to put in my own art. You know, I think I'm inspired by artists that don't do anything like what I do. Because right. I look at that, and I'm like, gosh, I wish I could think right. like that. Yeah, you know, yeah. um, but. I try not to get too involved with trends or anything like that. I just kind of want to do my own thing, and I hope that people like well, what it is. It's usually because people are following your trends. Well, <laughs> that's uh, probably I just, why. I mean, but I still craft, and like that's what I'm always doing. I'm always crafting. So when I'm not here, I'm in my studio playing around. Right. But aren't you tired of it? Don't you think like after a trade show, you'd be like, I don't want to see another ink pad. It's like, no, because doing this, I'm thinking, ooh, mm -hmm. I can do this. I can 
this. Now, when you created the Distress ink pads, did you have an idea about the Distress, the, the stains? Or is that something that kind of just... The stains you know? just happened. I mean, really, the more I used the Distress pads and the more I found myself really doing a lot of this and then constantly re-inking it, it's like, I just wish this was liquid. So, in fact, in my book, I was showing how to, like, do scribble yeah. stain. And I was like, and that really is what sparked it. I'm like, this is cool, but it's when you still put the paper down, it was like, it's super saturated. I'm like, so I want this color, but I want it liquid. And they're like, well, just water it down. I go, well, if you do, it doesn't react. It doesn't do this. If you water it down, it's just like watercolor. It doesn't do anything. It takes away the fun of distress. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, I want it to work like an ink pad, but be in a liquid bottle. I'm like, All right, let's give it a shot. I mean, that's the stain. You, you couldn't do that with yeah. the pad. You just, the pads are all soft. This is like, I don't know. That's pretty cool. It's inspiring stuff. Cool. And another great thing is you can stamp with this stuff too. That's and you're gonna get a completely different and effect what, than you would with an ink pad. What made you um, I guess put the actual designs back with the stamps? That was like that, I was yeah. like I mean that's Yeah, it was you know, it was a long time coming when I teamed up with Stampers Anonymous, it was always what I wanted to do as a stamper. I always wanted it on the cling, but um, it's very difficult to do especially from uh, a U.S. manufacturer, which all the stamps are made in Cleveland. Uh, so they're not done overseas. And that's a big thing because these are all handmade, one set at a time. So, and they do an amazing job. But after the 100th set, I'm like, all right, so we've proven that this is worthy of kind of stepping it up. And so really, Stampers Anonymous changed all their equipment, got all new stuff in so they can mold them, wow. <laughs> screen them, and put them on. Yeah, it's... Because it's like the ultimate stamper stamp. It's like it's a rubber stamp that I can see. Yes. That's it's the best of both worlds. It took why people like clear stamps because they can see it, but the quality of having a rubber stamp. Because really, a rubber stamp. I mean, even like this, I can just take my distress stains. And I'm going right over my stamp, and I can stamp the stain. And then just dry it. And you get that really great watercolor look right from the beginning. And again, you can spray this, and this can be reactive with water. So it's you can see already that it's kind of that blurry look, but that's the whole idea of the stain. So, you know, I wouldn't stamp, like I probably wouldn't stamp these butterflies with stain unless I just wanted silhouettes, knowing that I wouldn't get any of the detail because it's far too fluid. So, again, that's going to be the difference of having your distress stain to do these backgrounds or using your distress ink pads. Yeah, they just go hand in hand. Match made in creative heaven, really. So for ribbons, trims, anything like that, you want to take any of the trimmings and you want to color it. We can go in and work with the stain. So let's take, what have we done? We haven't done dusty concrete. Let's take that. They're much better. Oh, you'll like this color. I'll do pink for you. It's just because I don't know how pink it's going to stay because my hands are a little gross. But you can take even color like sponge sugar and I can just apply it right on to the trim. And now you have stained trimming if you want to. If you want this to have kind of a mottled look or a more variegated look, I'll go in and spray aside with water. And let's take a a little bit more vibrant color. If I just touch it with a stain, that's going to just blend it right in. And I can take all different colors. If I wanted to go in, let's add a little bit of weathered wood. Maybe we'll do a touch of green. Do a little forest moss. But I'll still keep the spun sugar side as clean as possible. And then we can just dry this. So anything that's porous, these stains are going to work on. Canvas, wood, paper, chipboard, grunge board, anything like that. And you do not have to heat set them. I'm just drying them to dry them, just so you can see. Because they really do, uh, they change their entire property when you do this. And when you first heat them, especially if it's something that you got really wet, I mean, I think, personally, that if you're going to use this sustained fabric, you're welcome. If you're going to use this sustained fabric, that I would prefer it to air dry, 
because I think you're going to get a far more intense color than if you heat it because you're going to see right now that it's going to start, it looks like it's burning but it's just steam. So if you see that it's smoking, it's not heat, <laughs> it's not on fire. Um, because otherwise that tool would be a crumpled little ball. It's just steam. Uh, but again, I think some of that color is going away as well. Yeah, it has to. It has to be evaporated. So no, it's not on fire. It's just like a... Now is it the material you made it out of? Because I you know other flowers, they do shrivel up. I know. That's because so I designed it's... this for inking. All of my yeah. trimmings, if you saw the trimmings in Ideology, that set is just all three white, and they're all for inking. So the same thing like with the, the sheer ribbon, where's my little thin crinkle bars? Same thing, a lot of people thought it was seam binding ribbon, it's not seam binding ribbon, it's a crinkle ribbon, it's designed to take ink and dry with a heat tool. So you're gonna have that, just that great quality of a fabric trim that's designed to take ink. And the heat gun. So. If it's not worth inking, it's not worth doing, right? Right. I mean, we gotta, yeah, we gotta get on there and do some inking. Um, grunge, for example, this is, this is one of those things that if you work with grunge and you have uh, this love or hate relationship with grunge, I use grunge all the time and I love to ink it and, and do things with it. But of course, when you ink it and using the blending tool, it's great. But I mean, it takes quite a few layers to get the intensity that, you're, that you can get with just applying your stain. So that's, I mean, that's another cool thing. If you have chipboard letters or anything porous, you can just apply that. Craft Resist, this is one of the new papers that I did at this show. So this is uh, a stash of paper that is all printed on craft. That's gonna have black images and also it is going to be printed with a clear image. <coughs> so I can just go over this. If I wanted to take this paper, for example, you can see all the pieces that I've used. Yeah. Just use it again and again. And just tear this one out. You can use craft resist a couple of different ways too. We can go over it with the blending tool. And that's really cool. It's going to take ink really nice. Let me do it this way. Or I can go over it with the stain. And I can do, let's say we'll just take weathered wood. Weathered wood's going to kind of be a gray color. Maybe I want to show you fired brick. I mean, this is just so you can see how the colors vary when they dry. Because a lot of times when you're using stain, when I taught this in our workshop here at CHA, let me grab this. Tim, what's the waiting list to get you into a store? Because um, I know we've been trying to get you for um, a while. Mile. If it's new on the list, it's about seven years. Which one remember when Valencia, California? Oh, totally. You're on the short list. We're on the short list. Yeah, that's This is about list. the only time the short list is good. Yeah, the short, we can get the like 100 Tim Holtz fans sold out there. So yeah, because Valencia, aren't you guys? Um, remember like, with Tanya? Like Tanya? No, no, Match Mountain. Yeah, it's five minutes. Valencia. From Magic so how far is that? From, from here, here, it's like 40 miles. 40, no, 40, it's like 30 miles from here. Oh, that's close. Well, my house is West LA, which is five, five, ten miles. Yeah, so, so it's like totally close. No, you yeah. guys really so are on just, my short list. Short so list we should have we should start a petition and send it to Mario. No petition needed, really. Because we were thinking about doing like. Do videos, YouTube. We did do a video, Tim videos Holden. from our. What crop. do we need to do to get Tim Holtz into our store? Yeah, you can do a little skit. You don't have to do that. <laughs> Wait, remember? Were you at that crop yeah, where we're all? Would be better. Tim. A musical would be better. <laughs> oh, Tanya fans. Okay, you know what? So Tanya would love that. Karaoke in the store. You just. Be a glee. glee Tanya God. would love that. That would be perfect. Oh, serious? I'm a glee. Did you yeah. see them in concert? No. no. Really? No. I'm not. <laughs> Off the I did. <laughs> yeah. I love it. How can you not? We will go to the concert that will happy. get you there any faster. It's happy. Yeah. Um, Each so cop this, is 64 women. We can get them all to this do something. I just wanted to show you that you saw when I applied the stains, it was really dark, really saturated. But of course, when you're working on the craft resist, that as soon as the color dries, it's going to be its true color. I mean, that's weathered wood. So that's going to be kind of our light blue. That's going to be fired brick. That's peeled paint. So it's really one it's of those really things cool. that you've got to remember if you wanted this more intense, a second layer of the color would be a more saturated version of that color. So if you wanted a deeper red or a deeper pink, for example, you could go right over that and you could always layer these stains. They'll always build up, but they'll never become a darker color. In other words, you could never take broken china and expect to get it to be chip sapphire. It just won't ever be that way. The same reason that you can't ever water this down to get it to become weathered wood. They'll always maintain their 
integrity. I think that's what makes the stain just so exciting for me because mm -hmm. it really just it opens up a whole new way that you can quickly color stuff without spray.